Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God's good. So open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. And also one scripture, since this is Passion Week, I wanted to tie in the message tonight. Luke chapter 23, verse 18. Wouldn't you say that, that the greatest storm of all was the storm of Calvary? Um, did Jesus survive that storm? Well, he died, but he rose again. Amen. So sometimes we do die to things in the storms of life. Amen. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of things that we have to die to, but death is a really an avenue to new life. Amen. Um, so death to the Christian is not uh, annihilation. It never never was to be annihilation. So when a person dies, it's not completely the end of their existence. Death is not annihilation. Uh, death is uh, separation. Death is a new thing. Amen? A seed goes into the ground and then it dies. But does it really die? No, no. It's just, just something new. Amen? And so we're talking about surviving the storms of life. We've covered surviving anger, anger, road rage, uh, marital arguments, uh, surviving all of that. Is there a survival kit for that? It's the Bible. Amen. We've talked about surviving discouragement, uh, discouragement, where we're discouraged about things in life. We've talked about surviving the storm of unforgiveness. We've talked about surviving the storm of tragedy. We've seen tragedies happen. Amen. Uh, surviving the storm of loneliness. When you're lonely, when you feel like nobody cares. Some of these tie together. Amen. This is like one big puzzle. Surviving the storm of stress. Has anybody had stress other than, than, uh, other than me? Anybody had stress? Amen. Condemnation. Who is he that condemneth? Uh, the devil wants to condemn us. I don't feel worthy. I can't sing. I'm not as good as sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. Surviving the storm of rejection. And this is going to tie in some with tonight. Surviving the storm of disappointment. Discouragement, disappointment. Surviving the storm of unbelief. That's a storm. It's also a sin. Uh, to not believe what God has said is to, in effect, say, God, you're a liar. Or, God, you want to do it but can't do it. So not only a liar, but you're uh, uh, unable. And how many of you know that doesn't sit well with, wouldn't sit well with you, would it? <laughs> Uh, praise God. So we can't believe. In fact, some per, somebody said I would rather curse than, uh, than, than doubt God. Uh, because when you doubt God, you are robbing him of his identity and his power and his deity. But we all go through those times of unbelief. Uh, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. Amen. So I'm just taking a few minutes to lay a foundation because I want to time it just right when the young people come in. Okay. But I feel like it's good for us to go back through. The things we're surviving. And then last Wednesday night, surviving the storm of jealousy. Jealous of people, jealous of others, uh, jealous of what God might be doing in somebody else's life. Brother Bird used to tell me that when a man is jealous of you, he's actually paying you a compliment. <laughs> That's Brother Bird for you. He could tell you some good stuff. He said, because if they're jealous of you, it just means that uh, they want what you have. So in effect, they're paying you a compliment. So if somebody gets and, and we're talking about jealousy from me going to a person. I'm jealous of somebody. But what if you deal with people who are jealous of you from them coming that way? Then don't be discouraged. You can survive that storm. Amen. And so tonight, I want to talk to you about surviving the storm of being unwanted unwanted so there's two scriptures we're going to read our main text Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24 if you're there say amen. amen therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and does them I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came the winds blew and beat upon that house but it fell not for it was Founded upon a rock. This is, this is some rock truth we want to give you in these teachings. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine, and you don't do them, you're like unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, 
and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So we want, we want to be the former, not the latter. We want to survive the storm. It's going to beat upon us. It's going to come with full fury. The storms of life are real, and they're going to come. And that's what our pastor has been wanting through these teachings to help you to prepare for them. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Amen? Now go to Luke chapter 23, verse 18. Luke chapter 23 and verse 18. If you're there, say amen. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man and release unto us Barabbas. I'm going to read it again. Luke 23 and verse 18. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man. Who are we talking about? Jesus. Away with this man, Jesus. We don't want him. Who do you want? We want Barabbas. Barabbas was a murderer. Barabbas was a thief. Barabbas was an uh, insurrectionist. Rebellious. Sounds like the devil. You ever thought of that? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Barabbas fits all three. And they wanted, well, let's put it to you this way. Jesus, at that moment, was going through the storm of not being wanted. Truly, he said, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Now, Father, tonight, help us to see how we can survive the storm of being unwanted. And everybody said amen Amen. and amen. So, this upcoming Friday is what we call Good Friday. And it's the day in which Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was crucified. Where he hung between heaven and earth. So, in the greatest sense, Good Friday represents the anniversary of being unwanted. You see, the Pharisees did not want him. The disciples fled from him. The Jews did not want him. The crowd did not want him. We have to even theologically go a step further and say even the Father hid his face for a moment, that which we cannot comprehend with three pounds of human gray matter. But suffice it to say that Jesus was unwanted. The people had a choice. They had a choice between Jesus or they had a choice between Barabbas. This was Pilate's way of getting off the hook. This was Pilate's way of saying, thinking when he stands before God, knowing he shouldn't do it. Well, God, I gave the people. So like Adam, the woman you gave me. Listen, there are no excuses. When it comes to the day of judgment, we will give an account to the choices we make. And Pilate made a horrible, terrible decision when he offered to the people either Jesus or Barabbas. When he had it in his power to rescue and to send that man away unharmed. And he is forever in the, in the pits of hell regretting that, that decision. And so let me tell you something. Choose Christ. No matter what the crowd says. No matter what the Pharisees say. No matter what mama says. Uh, Our cousin Sally says, uh, choose the Lord. No matter if they defriend you on Facebook. uh, No matter if if they talk about you on fake news. uh, I promise you, uh, I'd rather have Jesus uh, than silver or gold. Uh, I'd rather have Jesus uh, than riches untold. Uh, Oh, God, help us. uh, Help those uh, who look to Jesus and reject him. Well, I haven't rejected you. Well, have you made him the Lord of your life? Have you accepted him as your Savior? No, I had not got around to it. Then you've rejected him. You have said no to the one who said yes to you to die for your sins. And so getting back to the fact that he was unwanted, have you ever felt unwanted? Those who've gone through a divorce maybe have felt unwanted. Those whose spouse has cheated on them has felt unwanted. Maybe in the in the job market, you are getting older. 
And so younger people come in with better training and, and, and more vitality. And so you get shown the front door, the side door, whatever door. And uh, they tell you to, to take, a, um, take a vacation as long as you want. And that's a way of saying you're not wanted here anymore. I mean, I know preachers that have, uh, I know one preacher not far from here, Pastor Jerry and I is a friend of ours that was at a certain church for 15, 16, 17 years, and all of a sudden they came up and said, we want to take a vote. You know what they were really saying? We don't want you anymore. And that's our legal way of getting, showing you the door. Mighty quiet in here tonight. <laughs> People in marriages, people in ministry, uh, people, uh, it could be as much as a, a girlfriend broke up with me. Let me tell you something. If your girlfriend broke up with you and you've not been, ever been married or maybe you're a young person you're dating, uh, I promise you, the, the, looking back, the best times of my life, it wasn't then, but when my girlfriend didn't want me anymore or I broke up with my girlfriend or whatever the reason, uh, I look back and say, thank you, Lord, because God brought the right one into my life. So if you're unwanted, you're... Can you have someone who is identified with you? We deal with uh, uh, pregnancies. Those who who are in their pregnancy, they're saying we don't want this child. Why? Because this child will cost us money. This child will be a, a burden. This child, uh, I, I I I don't want. No no no. You see. Uh, we live in a day when, when people are not valued. Uh, we don't want certain members. We don't want certain people. We don't want certain classes. Uh, let me tell you, if you're part of a class that's not wanted, guess what? So is Jesus. Amen? So there is a way to survive. And I, what I want to do is take you to the cross. The cross, the, 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 the cross has two parts. It has the horizontal parts. Amen? And it has the vertical part say amen. In fact, one person commentator said uh, the cross is God's plus sign uh, and it adds to your life. It gives you eternal life. Amen. When the, when the math doesn't add up in your life, when things don't add up, look to the cross. Uh, praise God. God will make it all add up. Uh, because when it gets all down to it, uh, you'll be with Him forever. You'll never be unwanted. Amen. amen. Praise God. You're the apple of His eye. The darling of his pe peculiar uh, care. Understand that not a hair on your head is not numbered. Uh, he knows your frame. He knows your name. He remembers that we are but dust. So you know we're, we're dust. When we, we die, we go back to dust. And you know God told Abraham, count the dust on the shore. So the smallest part of me, God numbers every part. I'm not unwanted. Amen. And the cross tells us that we are not unwanted. Now, they didn't want Jesus, but Jesus wants you. Amen. You've been hurt, rejected, lied on, shown the door, slammed the door in your face. Um, let me tell you something. Look to the cross. Look to Good Friday. And I want to talk about that, that horizontal part of the cross, the vertical part of the cross. So I want to say vertical. Vertical, the cross has two dimensions. Well, you could say many dimensions, but two that I want to, uh, physical dimensions. The vertical. Vertical means this way. Somebody, somebody say amen. amen. So the vertical part of the cross means up and down. And what you could believe, what you could say is that the vertical part of the cross means that God up there came down to us. Praise God. The vertical part of the cross means that God made the first step. Before there was a sinner on earth, there was a Savior in heaven. God, Charles Spurgeon, God must have chose me before I was born. He would have never chosen me after I was born. Praise God. The vertical cross means that God stepped out of his comfort zone. He stepped out of glory. He stepped vertically from up there to down here so that he could take us from down here to up there. I wish somebody would give the Lord a hand of praise tonight. Hallelujah! The vertical cross stands for the fact that God came down from heaven to earth. But I want to focus on the horizontal cross, the second dimension. 
Not only is there the vertical cross that God came down, but the horizontal cross speaks of this. His arms open wide. Now get the picture. Amen. Amen. So the first speaks of God's initiation. He initiated salvation. But this part speaks of God's invitation. When we think of the horizontal cross, the thought that his arms are open wide, how can we ever feel unwanted? I am my father's child. He loves me with an everlasting love. He he. He'd rather, Jim Whitfield, he, God would rather, you know how he talks, he, he goes real low. God would rather kill his son than to live without you. And that's a Jim Whitfield. Have you ever heard him make that statement? God would rather kill his son than live in eternity without you. If that didn't bring a tear to your eye, if that doesn't help you deal with that girlfriend that broke up with you in 1942, I mean, come on, if that doesn't help you deal with the fact you were given the pink slip, if that doesn't deal with the fact that some deacon got mad at the preacher and decided to get rid of him, if that doesn't deal with the fact that, that, that you had a little spat in your marriage, I don't know what can. Uh, the fact that God would rather kill his son and, and, and God says, uh, I don't want you to go to hell. And if you go to hell, uh, you'll do so over my dead body. Glory to God. So, the horizontal cross. Everybody say the horizontal cross. Tells me I'm not unwanted. We talk about point number one, Brother Blue, forgiveness. Forgiveness. Because I want you to see what's... Think about it. i got to put this mic down. Brother Baker, hold tight. Okay? I promise. Coming right back. You got the, you got the arms going here. I need my lapel mic. You got... The, the arms of Jesus are hanging like this. One way is pointing east, and the other way is pointing west. Can I get a witness out there? Not north and south. North, south. Y'all got it? That talks about forgiveness right there. When you look at the cross, you know, his arms weren't north and south. His arms were east and west. Well, why, why is that significant? Go to Psalm 103 and verse 12. The Bible says, as, read it out loud with me. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Thank God I'm not unwanted. Amen. I know I've sinned. I know I've messed up a thousand, hundred thousand times. I know that, that there are people that, uh, I was, what was I watching the... I was reading something or watching something about this guy that had murdered somebody. Oh, it was probably 48 Hours Mystery or some one of those shows. And some, some guy killed somebody and a and, uh, terrible murderer. And um, he got put on death row. Am I hearing the angels music here or something? All right. I just want to make sure I was about ready to go to glory. Amen. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not glory. It's a cell phone tower. All right. Thank you for putting your phone on silence. Whoever's got that, if you'll just, just we, we understand. We're not trying to. I don't know who it is. So I'll bow my head and close my eyes if you want to slip out. <laughs> All heads are bowed and eyes are closed. And that whoever needs to cut it off, cut it off. Come on now. That's a polite way of saying don't let it happen again. Amen. <laughs> if you do, we still want you. Amen. <laughs> oh, but listen, even to the murderer. Did you, do you know I would have no problem going on death row to a person who's killed, killed five or six people, I would have no problem going to them and saying, hey, you know what? God still loves you. And as long as you're alive, he offers you his mercy. How can, how can a man who's killed women or killed other men, how can, I can tell you why, because of the love and the mercy and the favor of God. It was like, well, <laughs> I don't understand that. What, 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 what? You mean you mean you're all righteous? Well, I had never killed anybody. Well, it's like one hog said to the other hog, "You looking dirty today, <laughs> folks? We're all dirty in sin, 
And the big truth of the matter is it doesn't have to be murder. It could be just a thought of murder. It could be one little sin. But as far as the east is from the west, I'm going to tell you the vilest of sinners. Oh, there's room at the... I don't care how much drugs you've taken, alcohol. I don't care how many times you've prostituted yourself. I don't care what sins. There is mercy. There was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty. At Calvary, somebody shout hallelujah as far as the east is from the west. If you can't shout about the fact that you can't pay your light bill next month, shout about the fact that he loves you as far as the east is from the west. And he'll help you get the light bill paid. Give him a hand of praise here tonight. You don't have to be unwanted. If you go north, you'll eventually come south. If you go south, you'll eventually go north. But if you go east, you'll never go west. If you go west, you'll never go east. The horizontal part of the cross says as far as the east is from the west, full and complete and total acceptance and forgiveness. Somebody say amen. amen. A little boy just couldn't understand it. How that God could do something. And his, he was asking his mother, how can God totally forgive my sins? And this is back in the day at the chalkboards. Man, for those of you that are 47 years in age and younger, or older, excuse me, younger, uh, a chalkboard was this thing in the classroom. And you had this little thing called chalk. And the teacher would write stuff with it and then erase it. Very easy to erase. Now, I don't know if they still have chalkboard. They probably have dry erase boards. It does the same thing, or, 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 or smart boards or whatever. But the mama said, said, uh, son, when a teacher writes something on the chalkboard and then she erases it, where, where do the words go? And the little boy got excited. Oh, I understand. When, when the teacher erases the words, mama, those words are nowhere. And that's what happens when God forgives our sins. Somebody say they're nowhere. Amen. The horizontal cross, uh, we ought to lift up our hand and give him a vertical praise right now for the hor for forgiveness. Uh, I'm not unwanted. Uh, I've been clean. I've been washed. I've been sanctified. I've been accepted. Uh, I've, been, I've been brought into the family. I'm so glad I'm a part uh, of the family of God. You can reject me, hate me, divorce me, fire me, but I'm in the arms of my father. And the, his arms go far and wide. Amen. The horizontal cross speaks of forgiveness. And if you've been forgiven, give him a hand of praise here tonight. Amen. And then number two, the horizontal cross speaks of acceptance. So we have a hard time with acceptance. I kind of tied this in on the first point. But acceptance. Now, the Statue of Liberty that's in New York Harbor, we don't understand immigration, and I know there's a great debate on immigration, and I have, we all have, we, we have to have some, some laws, we have to have some boundaries, um, we have to have some protections for our country, uh, and, I, and I, am, I believe in, in very much and strong uh, policies that we, we, we want people to come, but there's got to be protocol, we have to, we have to be be careful. I just, just might as well say it like it is. Um, and uh, but for so many years, from the late 1890s to the to the early 1920s, the immigrants from uh, from England and from Europe they would they would come into New York Harbor, and one of the first things they would see would be the Statue of Liberty. Has anybody ever seen the Statue of Liberty? Oh my goodness, that's an amazing statue. And underneath, there's a, on the Statue of Liberty is these words. Does anybody know what the words are on the Statue of Liberty? Some of you may know. Does anybody know? Oh, excuse me. Not the Statue of Liberty, but the, the uh, Ellis Island there. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe through it free. And then the rest of that, which we don't, we don't realize, but it says, The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I will lift my lamp beside the golden door. That's on the Statue of Liberty. Now listen, listen to me. 
Did you know that the cross is our Statue of Liberty? Do you know what that, the, the New York Harbor Statue of Liberty, it was saying acceptance. We accept you. Some of you are fleeing communism. Some of you are fleeing famine. Some of you are fleeing religious persecution. Over here, our arms are open wide. You can come, work hard. You've got a place here. And if you're going to come and break our laws, blah, 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 we're going to pack you up and send you back. And all, all of God's people said amen to that. I, I, I mean, we love you and God bless you, but, but we have to protect the homeland. Do we, do we, we will suffer and eventually. Eventually, not be be a nation. There's got to be boundaries. Can I get a witness out there? Just got to be two plus two equals four. If you believe in just unending immigration, then then practice it at home. Just open your door to your kitchen and let everybody come in who wants to come in, ever how they want to be when they get there. And I'll tell you something: immigration, your mind might change a little bit. <laughs> but listen. I want you to know that the Statue of Liberty, praise God, Jesus was accepting. Uh, if you listen, your huddled masses uh, yearning to breathe free, there's freedom uh, in the cross. Uh, uh, send those homeless, tempt us, toss to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. You may have been rejected, but the cross is the ultimate. Statue of Liberty, uh, and, and so it speaks uh, of being accepted. Uh, there are so many tonight you are dealing with being unwanted, uh, but listen uh, the cross, the horizontal cross, stands for acceptance. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6. Uh, it says to the praise, uh, Ephesians 1 and 6, to the praise uh, of the glory of his grace, uh, wherein he hath made us what? Accepted in the beloved. Somebody say amen tonight. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, this is a true story. About a young man in Toronto, Canada. Warren Beamer shared this. He was a youth pastor for John Hagee. And he, at one time he was a youth pastor at the Capitol Pentecost Honest Church. In Raleigh under Pastor Roland Harrell. And Warren Beamer told this story at Falcon Camp meeting several years ago. And I'll never forget this story. He said how he went to Toronto, Canada to hold a youth crusade. He said that over a thousand young people were there and he was preaching how God loved them and accepted them. And a young woman came down and was praying and several had gathered around her and her boyfriend came down to drag her away. And Warren Beamer said this young man was angry. He was dressed wild and he was trying his best to pull his girlfriend away. Warren Beamer said that as he walked down off the stage, he tried to talk with the young man, and he was so full of anger, and all of a sudden, Warren Beamer said that the Lord spoke to him as he was talking to this unresponsive, hard young man trying to pull his girlfriend from the altar. The Lord said, Warren, give your watch to him. And Warren Beamer, so I just heard the Lord say, give him your watch. And he said, I was talking to the young man, but inside I was arguing with the Lord. He said, God, I can't do that. My wife and my kids gave me that watch, and it was an expensive watch. And God said, do it. And so while they were down there and he was trying to talk to the young man, he just unsnapped his watch, put it over his hand, and, and he put it onto the, he told the young man, hold out his wrist, and he put that watch, I got it upside down. He put the watch, that means I can preach longer, amen, according to this. Wow, praise God, I'm just getting started. Amen. Y'all not laughing, I see, amen. And the, and the young man said, what are you doing? And Warren Beeman said, look, God wanted me to give you this watch, and he told me to tell you these words. This watch is from your father. And all of a sudden, that young man gasped. And began to cry and cry and cry uncontrollably. And several people came around and prayed for him. And after a few moments, the young man regained his composure, wiped his tears. He said, man, I don't know who you are. But you can't begin to understand this. He said, my dad, when I was 12 years old, he said, after, after he died, he said, I'd go into his room every day. 
and play with my daddy's watch. And I would just sit there looking at my daddy's watch, and my dad had died. He said, but then my mama, she got a new husband, and he didn't like me. And so they kicked me out. And he said, I've been living on the streets for four or five years now. And he said, the really, the only thing, I don't care about my mama, I don't care about her husband. He said, but the only thing I really wanted from that house. I didn't want my clothes. I didn't want anything else. If mama wanted that man, she could have him. He said, the only thing I ever wanted was my daddy's watch. He said, so yeah, I believe you right now. When you said, God said, give me that watch and it's from your father. Acceptance. Somebody give him praise here tonight. Hallelujah. I'm accepted. I may have been rejected by my mama's husband. I may be rejected by my employers, my friends, my family. There's a God, listen, with his arms open wide. The horizontal cross, east, west, arms open wide. And, and I'll tell you when, you, when you see somebody you love, man, your arms just go up and wide and you just hug and fall on them and you're accepting them. And, and, uh, and some people are like this. Speak to the hand, right? Come on now. I'll be preaching sometimes and they don't hold the hand up physically, but they're, they're holding it. They're not accepting it. Amen. I'm not talking about anybody here tonight. This is the perfect church, by the way. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And what Beth Stevens talking about Sunday, like, whoa, this is good preaching here. And I'm like, mm hmm, that's exactly right. You got it. You hit the nail on the head. And by the way, that doesn't just happen. To have an atmosphere like this, there's a reason. Amen. If you walk into a cold, dead church, there's a reason. But you walk into a living church where the Spirit is moving, there's a reason. Because God is in it. And somebody's prayed and somebody's acceptance. Uh, and somebody has uh, worshipped the Lord. Can, I say, can you say amen tonight? Amen. And so, if you feel unwanted, just remember Good Friday. Just remember His arms stretched open wide. He will forgive you. And not only will He forgive you. You know, some people can forgive you, but they never quite forget it. Come on now. You're like that. I'm like that because we're human. Amen. We kind of hold people at arms. Like, well, you hurt me. I ain't going to let you get close. You hurt me again. But that's not what God does. He says, not only you're forgiven, you're accepted. You're in. Amen. Tell somebody you're in. Amen. I started, I started working at Best Buy. I was 44 years old. <laughs> I still laugh about it. 44 years old now. Everybody there is younger than me. <laughs> but one or two. I mean everybody. Uh, <laughs> Brother, you are accepted tonight. Amen. Uh, oh, well, he might not after I tell you this story. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, but. I'm working back there with these 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 year old guys. And I'm a preacher. I've been a pastor for 20 years. And I'm like, mm hmm. Now, if I come in here and, you know, try to be holier than them, they ain't going to get it. Well, I'm not going to go in there and be sinful. I can tell you that now. You know, I'm not going to go in there and listen to bad jokes and, uh, Blah, 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 blah. But there's a way. And the best way to do it is just, just be real. Amen. Just to be true and be honest. And, and, uh, and when I first got there, you know, they're, they're younger than I am. They're not going to, you know, we're not going to have the same interests, the same things to talk about. But, but I, I, I'm friendly and we talk about, you know, sports. And things. that's an easy way to kind of, you know, sports. Is, uh, uh, and, that's, and, I, and I don't mean this wrong, but that's one reason I, I kind of keep up with sports is it gives me a way to talk to people. And, um, you know, nothing wrong with that. But anyway, I remember, you know, Lord, I, I just want to be accepted into this group here because, you know, I want them to, I want to be able to witness to them and I want to, be, you know, be able to invite them to church. And y'all pray because I've got several that, um, that I believe will be here Sunday. Now, you never know until they show up. But I'm going to tell you something. I've tried. Amen. I've tried. But I've got uh, about... Uh, four families coming, so I hope, praise God, that they'll be here. And 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 uh, I ain't gonna say what I just gonna say, but uh, but just 
no, we don't want them to sit on the front row, okay? You know, because they won't ever come back. And so if you see a visitor Sunday and they're in the back door and we're full, why don't you just kind of let them have your back seat and just move on up or side seat or whatever? And other than the Scott family, we know they have to, they, they, there's reasons they want to sit at the back and we allow for that. Uh, we certainly understand that. But the rest of us that, that are ab- able to and, and don't have some of the things, uh, so just, just kind of kind of be watching for people because think of it like, like, like if you have a child that you're like, oh God, would they please go to church? They never go to church. And just think they go to church somewhere out in, in Raleigh somewhere and they walk into this room and it's full of people and, and, and before they even get to the seat, all the back seats are taken up. So they turn around and walk go back home. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? I mean, because people just are not going to walk in front of a crowd. Okay? I mean, would you want to walk in front of a crowd? Of course not. Now, for Jesus, we ought to be able to walk in front of a crowd. Amen. I mean, come on, can I get an amen out there tonight? You, you love me tonight. That was a nice way of saying that, amen. I hope so. But anyway, they're going to be here. A lot of visitors here, so let's just be thinking about others. And, and, um, and um, anyway, y'all still love me? I used to say stuff like this, but it came across a whole lot differently. <laughs> Grow, grow and get under a wise pastor, amen. But uh, the, the thing is that um, I remember I was at work one day and, uh, and, and something went on and there was a sale. When people have sales, you know, I texted one of my buds and said, hey, man, I put you on this sale, whatever. And I didn't think it. I just felt like it was the right thing to do. And uh, one day, me and this one guy, his name is Jason, I said, we, we got to talking. And, and I had been there maybe about two or three months. And, and uh, we were kind of. Well, there's the cross. We're accepted. Amen. Praise God. It just seems like I'm on edge tonight. I'm hearing a lot of noises. <laughs> but I looked at Jason, and, uh, and, and I said, Jason, uh, we were just laughing. I said, am I in, man? He said, oh, yeah. He said, you're in. I said, are you for real? Me? I'm, you know, I'm, oh, yeah. I said, let me ask you something, Jason. How did I get in? He said, because you were honest. And you weren't trying to take something that other people are. And you're in, man. You're in. So, praise God. I'm in. I'm accepted. Glory to God. And thank the Lord for it. Just be real. Because, you know, we don't want to put on airs or pretend. I, I know I'm a pastor. But, friends, really, I see myself like the Apostle Paul, a chief of sinners. Amen. If it weren't for the grace of God, uh, just because I preach on Sunday, just because I have a position in the church, I need his grace more than any. And so, when I need it, I'll be more apt to show it to others. And when people need it and they feel it from you, that helps you to reach them. Can I get an amen out there? Thank God. Look, that cro- that, that when you see somebody, praise God, you throw your arms open wide. Uh, and, that, and when you look at the cross, those arms are open and wide. Uh, and when you come, praise God, he throws his arms around you. Can you say amen? Uh, have you felt the arms of love wrapping around you? If you have, would you give him praise uh, for it tonight? Uh, he knows your rejection. He knows your pain. Uh, he knows when you've been cheated on, lied on, kicked to the curb he knows when people have given up on you uh, when family has given up on you uh, but the cross says uh, I will not give up on you you are accepted uh, and you are forgiven somebody shout hallelujah tonight amen and then number three not only with his arms open wide the horizontal cross it stands for forgiveness say amen it stands for acceptance say amen Well, let's go a little further. It stands for expectance. God's expecting you. You know, when you're expecting somebody, don't don't you get a little excited? (laughs) Woo, I got company. I know pastor and first lady, I know they're expecting those kids and grandkids. Amen. When they come, aren't you expecting them? Oh, my goodness, you're not dreading it. You're not like, oh, my at least I don't think so. <laughs> well, you're not like Brother Ralph Johnson, who used to be a member here when it when when this when this was living waters. He's like, uh, you know, at Christmas, some people say that the the best lights they see is the tail lights of the family leaving. You know, uh, Brother Ralph said, "Not me. I want my family here." So, but anyway, praise God. L- listen, expectance. Somebody say expectance. This takes it to another level. Forgiven, yeah. Accepted, yeah. But the next part is, not, would you come on? 
Would you? Yeah, kids, come right on in. Perfect timing, absolutely. Come on in with the Easter bunny. He's expecting you because he loves you. You're not unwanted. You're expected at the table. You're expected at the foot of the cross. You're expected uh, to be uh, to, to be blessed and highly fed. God's expecting uh, you to come so he can bless you and touch you and feel you and thrill you. Uh, he's waiting. Uh, he's got a place set. Uh, you don't have to wait any longer. You don't have to get somebody's permission. Praise God. His arms are open wide and he's expecting something. He's expecting you to come and worship. He's expecting you to come and be blessed. Thank God not only am I accepted, I'm expected to be there because God wants to bless. He wants to show his love. He wants to show his favor. Somebody shout amen tonight. I wish you'd give him a hand of praise here tonight. Amen. So, you're going to have to do this in your mind, and I didn't have time to put it on the, on the screen for you tonight, but pretend this is a mountain here. Everybody say Mountain A. And over here is the valley. Somebody say the valley. All right, wh what is this? And this is? And this is Mountain B. Mountain A is over there. Mountain B is over here. So, I want to go from... I want to go from Mountain B to Mountain A. Well, what have I got to do? Can I do it in one step? I got to do what? Go through the valley. And that's a deep valley. And I can't get over there. You remember how the cross was built? Vertical. There you go, sister. And horizontal. And that's a big cross. So... I see the mountain over there, but I'm in my sin. And mountain A is God. Are y'all with me tonight? And I want to get to where God is, but it's dangerous. I can't walk there. The valley's too low. Take too long. Great risk. I would more than likely die. And so God puts the cross down in the valley and there's that vertical part. Say amen. And then there's that horizontal part. So picture in your mind the, I know this is my right, your left. But picture one part of the cross is on mountain A. And that horizontal part is straight over the valley over to where? Mountain B. So now I want to go to where God is. And now I don't have to go through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't have to die for my sins. What do I have to do? I just have to walk on over and make a move and move on over to God's mountain. And guess what God is doing over there? His arms are open wide. I tell you what, when somebody's arm is open wide and they're looking at you, you know what? They're expecting a hug. Can I get an Amen. Oh, thank God, you may feel unwanted. You may feel like your girlfriend's broke up with you. You may feel like the teacher don't like you. You may feel like you're not wanted by your parents. But I'm here to tell you, God has made a way for you to come from where you are to where he is. He's expecting you to come. That's what Easter is all about. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Now, will you do it? Will you come to God? He's expecting you. Do you remember this? And I close with this. The prodigal son who left the father. He went out into the hog pen. He came to himself. And he began to go back. And that's a great story of, of repentance. That's a great story of the penalty of sin. Because really that's what sin is, a bunch of hog mess. Hello, y'all from eastern North Carolina? The hogs are wonderful to eat, but they're not wonderful to be laying around with. Can I get a witness? But the greatest part of that story isn't the repentance and isn't the penalty. The greatest part of that story is that the father was expecting him to come. Would you stand with me tonight? Turn around and tell somebody you're not unwanted. Turn around and tell somebody you're expected. 
Hold those arms open. Praise God. Come on, hold them open. Everybody, hold them open. That's what Jesus, that's what the cross is. From the east to the west, say, I'm forgiven. Amen. With arms open wide, I'm accepted. Say, I'm accepted. Arms open wide, say, I am expected. Amen. Now take those arms and lift them up vertically and say, Lord, I praise you for the cross. I praise you for Easter. I'm not unwanted. I'm going to survive the storm of being unwanted. Jesus, they chose Barabbas over you, but God, you chose Jesus over Barabbas. And forever you are accepted, and forever we praise you. And if somebody rejects me, I'm not rejected by the Lord. I want you to give him a hand of praise. We're going to survive the storm. Of being unwanted. Pastor, will you come and close our service and I'll play on the piano tonight. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I want all the little kids to come up here and sing with me at the cross. Because it's beyond the cross that we find forgiveness. What Jesus did at the cross that makes us accepted. We're accepted in the beloved. Aren't you glad that God does not reject us, but he accepts us? Hallelujah. And Jesus has made us worthy to be accepted into the kingdom. Yes. At the cross, at the, at the cross, cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away, it was Sing it again. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart. And now I am happy all the day. One more time. Oh, at, at the, the cross, cross, at the cross, where I first Jesus. Shout yes. One more time. Do you love Jesus? I can't hear you. I said I can't hear you. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith, it was there by faith, I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Now give everybody a big smile and let them know how happy you are in Jesus. Come on, give them a great big smile. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Let's God. see those pearly white. Go in the power of God's Spirit. Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday. Yes. What a great message on